Today's podcast is brought to you by Audible. Get a free audiobook download and a free 30-day trial at www.audibletrial.com slash heroes, villains, and sidekicks. Over 180,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or MP3 player. Episode 28, Abracadabra and Music Meister. Hi, this week on the Heroes, Villains, and Sidekick show, we're going to be talking about two Flash villains that have jumped from the comic book page onto the small screen and have been giving the CW's Flash a run for his money. This week, we're going to learn about a somewhat obscure character, Abracadabra, and then a very obscure character, the Music Meister. And yes, I did say that correctly. That is the Music Meister. So if you've listened to the show before, you know I'm a huge Flash fan, and I consider myself, you know, someone who knows a little bit about the Flash, the bad guys, you know, the history. So I was very confused when I watched last week's, you know, musical episode of Flash on the CW. Now, the villain on the show was really throwing me. Usually I can guess who it is if I haven't sort of been watching uh, trailers and whatnot, but who was he? Who was this villain this week? I mean, he was very well-dressed. He had a a sharp red, you know, pocket square uh, suit. And they kept dropping things like saying words like magic and performance, and it was all very theatrical. So I was thinking, you know, this was Abracadabra. Uh, I figured uh, Cadabra was using like all his tech that he has to like steal their powers and do things like that. But they never said his name through the whole show. So I was like, this maybe this isn't Cadabra. Then really at the end, almost as a sort of throwaway line. Barry says that they had squared up against the Music Meister, which I, every time I say it, it makes me laugh. And I was like, who the heck is the Music Meister? I don't know if I've ever heard of him. So then right after the show ended, which was funny, they showed a preview for the next week's episode, which is, of course, going to be this week's episode when this comes out. And the villain is going to be Abracadabra. So I was like, wow. This needs to be a show. I did not who know who the music meister is, and I know who Abracadabra is. So let's um, let's do a show where uh, I talk about two of the Flash villains that have been on the CW show, The Flash, the past couple weeks. So today we're going to talk about the music meister and Abracadabra. So let's start up with the Music Meister first, since I had no idea who this was. Now, the Music Meister was created by Michael Jelinek for the animated program Batman the Brave and the Bold in 2009, and he appeared in an episode titled Mayhem of the Music Meister. And this was awesome. He was voiced by the incredibly talented Dr. Horrible, Horrible himself, Neil Patrick Harris. So... This was one reason why I wasn't really familiar with him. I, you know, my son was of an age where he wasn't really watching these types of cartoons anymore. So I didn't know it was even on. I mean, I think I saw a few episodes, uh, the one with Jonah Hex, I think, in Dead Man, but I never saw this one. So there you go. The Music Meister first made his appearance on the animated program and not in the comics. And like I said, Neil Patrick Harris voiced him, and it was the perfect choice for NPH to do this because the voice of the character is a big, you know, his powers revolve around his voice, his singing voice. And of course, Neil Patrick Harris has an amazing singing voice. Now, The character then makes his comic debut in issue 16 of the all-new Batman, The Brave and the Bold comic. But I have to tell you that that episode with Neil Patrick was so much fun. You know, I've got a huge part of the show, uh, of that animated show, with the Music Meister, with with NPH singing over at the site uh, on the episodes page. So just head over to heroesvillainsandsidekick.com, and there on the episodes page, under the show title, The Music Meister and Abracadabra, you will see these clips. They are fantastic. The singing is great. So what are the uh, Music Meister's powers? Well... What he is able to do, he it's it's a fairly strange power. So what happens is they have to do with music. I guess you probably guess that much. And he's actually a metahuman. So Music Meister is a metahuman. And when he sings, he puts his victims into a trance and they have to do whatever the Meister sings. So the Meister is always singing. Now, the funny thing about this is that when his victims fall into this trance, when they're under his control, they also burst into song and dance as though they were in a musical. So 
it's all very singing. Everybody's singing. You know, you're not just saying your lines. You're not just saying, I'm going to stop you. You're singing it. So Meister also uh, carries around a conductor's baton that shoots out sort of lasers or energy bolts that sort of erupt from the baton in the shape of musical instruments. So this is, you know, there is no um, subtlety wasted on the character or his name. So the first episode of the animated program he was in, the uh, Batman uh, Brave and the Bold, the music meister uses his powers to enslave, and this is a weird lineup, Black Canary, Green Arrow, well, I guess it isn't, I mean, these are people that work together, Aquaman, Black Manta, Gorilla Grog, and Clock King. And he uses his powers to try to get them to steal the UN communication satellite so he can beam his mind control powers over the entire planet. Now, he's, of course, thwarted by Batman after several, you know, interesting references to musicals such as, like, The West Side Story and The Phantom of the Opera. So they really play up on this whole musical thing. Now, we don't really get a true origin story. We do get a hint at his origin. And, of course, it's something that he sings. And I am not going to punish you, dear listeners, with me singing, but he sings this. Bullies used to pick on me because I sang in choir, but something very strange occurred when I was kept singing higher. The ruffians around me quickly fell into a trance, and it was then, with wicked glee, I made those puppets dance. So, of course, you know, he was a meta, and so that power was with him all along, and he used to get picked on in school. And then he realized when he was would sing at a certain octave or whatnot, he could enthrall his victims. So that is the, the origin, technically, of the... Uh, music Meister. Now, the Music Meister, of course, like we said, at first he was in the animated show, and then he appears in the all-new Batman, the Batman Brave and the Bold comic in issue 16, where sort of Bat Batmite is in love with Batgirl, and he uses his power to bring a bunch of people around that are musical to maybe win her heart over. Of course, one of the people he brings over is the Music Meister, and the Music Meister tries to take over Batmite to use his considerable magic powers. But as you can guess, he was defeated. Now, he has a pretty big weakness, and you might have already thought of this. Even since his powers work through his voice and sound, he can be easily defeated by a 99 cent pair of earplugs from Lowe's. So, you know, you block his singing and you are safe. Now, like I said, Meister was on The Flash last week, and it was interesting to see how they changed up the character. Uh, he was portrayed by uh, Darren Chris, and the the it's it's kind of subtle, but it's actually quite large, the difference that they made in the character. A, he wasn't sort of this, you know, over-the-top sort of buffoonish type character. He was very dapper and, again, a nice suit and very well-spoken. Now, he also didn't control them by his voice. He would look at them and sort of their eyes would meet and his eyes would do this little, you know, CGI ripple thing. And then, of course, who he did that to would fall unconscious. Now, it was in a crossover between CW where uh, Supergirl is uh, affected by him. Then he comes over through uh, a breach and he affects Barry. And they're both uh, knocked unconscious. And they Barry wakes up and Supergirl is singing. He's sort of a noir type club. And you realize that, and they realize too, that they are in some type of musical. But... So, and that's the interesting thing about this incarnation of the Music Meister is that, you know, his victims are, you know, they don't just do what he says when he's singing. They're actually trapped in a musical of their own making. And in this version, they have to live out the musical's plot to escape. Now, I don't know if that's the only time how we see him doing his powers. Maybe he still has this other mind control type power, but this is how they do it in this episode. See, and the other neat thing is, you know, of course, it's dangerous when they're in this musical because, you know, if they die in the musical, they die in real life. But that's a that's a maybe. See, this music meister seems to be kind of a good guy. When Kara and Barry get out of the musical, it's really only because they were saved by people that loved him. And the Meister tells them this to go in there and help them, and they do. And then Meister explains that, hey, He's all about love and reconciliation. And then I'm thinking, is this guy supposed to be Cupid? But, I mean, this isn't a Valentine's Day issue. 
I was quite confused. And then he even goes on to say, they ask him, you know, are you from an alternate earth? And he sort of impishly says, you know, he's not from anywhere they would understand. And he vanishes. So I was like, this guy's Cupid. This is making no sense. So I was, I was quite flummoxed. And then of course it wasn't until the end that when he mentioned music Meister that I was like, well, I have to look this up. Now I have to say that I really enjoyed that musicals, uh, episode. I mean, I'm a sucker sucker for musicals themselves, so I really dug it. And I thought it was a really nice twist on the whole musical episode shows that they have out there. Um, you know, people have been doing them ever since Buffy did that fantastic episode where sort of they sang everything. That sort of became the gold standard for musical episodes. And I thought that making the, and having a, a bad guy slash good guy, we're not sure yet, whose power was to make you sing like that and put you in a musical was a nice was a nice twist. And before we start in on Abracadabra, let's take a quick message from our sponsor. For you, the listeners of the Heroes, Villains, and Sidekick show, Audible is offering a free audiobook download with a free 30-day trial to give you the opportunity to check out its service. Now, personally, I've been using them for a while, and one of the books I'm actually listening to right now, uh, I realized I wanted to sort of reread some of these old sci-fi books, but I don't have time to reread old sci-fi books, but I do have a decent commute. It's about 45 minutes, so I am in the process now of listening to the whole Foundation series, Isaac Asimov's Foundation series. They're all on audio uh, over on audible.com, and I am just digging listening to these. And Next, I'm going to the robot novels. I'm going straight from these to the robot novels. So it isn't just new books. You can look up these old books over on audible.com. So to download your free audiobook today, go to audibletrial.com slash heroes, villains, and sidekicks. Again, that's audibletrial.com slash heroes, villains, and sidekicks for your free audiobook. Now back to the show. Citizen Abra, a.k.a. Abracadabra. Now, Abracadabra is one of my favorite Flash villains, mostly because I I just kind of like the idea. It mixes in time travel and science and magic, and he's such a sad, sad character. But, I mean, before we get into that, let's let's go a little bit over about the background and the origin of Abracadabra. So, Abracadabra's real name, Citizen Abra, and of course, a.k.a. Abracadabra, and he loves magic. He is a showman. Now, unfortunately, where he's from, the art of the magician is lost on its inhabitants. See, Abra is from the 64th century, where magic and science are virtually indistinguishable. So when magic, uh, when Abracadabra goes to, uh, say, the Hall of Magicians, which is pretty much just like a rundown museum at this point, and he tries to perform... There's like one person there and he's not very interested because he's like, hey, you know, that's, what is that? That's nothing. That, I can get this kind of thing at my AMP. It's science. And, and they're not amazed anymore at anything. Then Abra learns that there was just a new invention that came out because technologi- technological inventions are coming out all the time. This is the 64th century. And this new invention is a time machine. And at first, he's not too hot on the idea. I mean, he hates technology because it, it's ruined the craft of magic. And that's just a funny idea anyway. Like, they just thought up this character that was going to love magic so much, he went back in time to be a magician. And I did forget to mention where the first time we see Abracadabra is. I'm sorry. He was back in episode, or I'm sorry, issue. We're talking so much about TV. Abracadabra actually first appeared in The Flash 128. So again, this is an old Flash villain way back in May of 1962 and was, of course, created by John Broom and the amazing Carmine Infantino. So Abracadabra realizes he can go back in time to when magicians were loved and and it was a, a noble profession. And so he can do this and perform in front of applauding audiences. So, of course, he steals the time machine and Of course, he has all the tech from that era that seems like just super magic in our time, but it's really just science. And with his 64th century technology, he goes back in time to Central City. And he is truly, would truly at that point be the greatest magician in the world, if you come to think of it. I mean, he could do incredibly amazing things. And when he got to Central City, he did start doing some street magic that really stunned people. They were amazed. 
But here's the problem. They must not have, they didn't give him what he really wanted, which was applause. So his vanity it was so great. It wasn't just that they were like very impressed and said, oh, that's amazing. He needed applause. He needed the sound of a crowd. So he actually used a piece of his tech, a hypno ray, to make all the people clap. And I mean, it's pretty sad because all he had to do was perform some more, you know, book some gigs, use all that 64th century technology to stun the world. I mean, he would have been the most famous and he would have been richer than he could have ever imagined. But, you know, vanity and low self-esteem, he just needed he needed that rush. He needed to people the validation of the applause. And since he didn't get it, it turned him into a criminal. He sort of went the criminal way. He realized that he got more attention than uh, being on stage doing the magic if he would commit crimes. So he started stealing And it was also to draw the Flash out because he realized that the Flash was someone who, A, took away from his glory, stole the spotlight from him, and could also stop him in these these heists he was starting to do. So they fought a few times, and then Abracadabra announced a huge performance that was going to be the biggest trap, the trap to get the Flash. So uh, Abracadabra started the show, and he waited for the Flash to arrive. Now, when Barry came running towards Abra, uh, Abracadabra hit him with a blast, a magical blast, which is really, you know, a science, some type of a transporter ray, and Barry disappeared. And the only thing that was left was his suit. And, of course, then he made everybody clap, which I don't know why he would have had to make everyone clap. I mean, that's pretty amazing, right? The suit's there and Flash is gone. But Barry didn't disappear. Cadabra's magic flung Barry into space. And there's some funny things here because, I mean, now in true Silver Age fashion, Barry was rocketing through space and somehow he was able to land on an asteroid because it sort of pulled him into its gravitational pull. And he ran around the asteroid at top speed and then was able to, I guess, aiming, it said he aimed, (laughs) uh, threw himself, uh, launched himself back to Earth, of course, and he survived space and re-entry due to his flash speed aura. Now, that's all pretty wacky. And, of course, that page is over over on the site, in the episodes um, page, on the Heroes, Villains, Sidekicks.com site. But one of the funniest things about that was Barry is clothed. He has his clothes on. So when he is flying through space... He has got clothes on. Now, I can't imagine he wears khakis, shoes, a button-up shirt under that Flash uniform. So I thought that was really strange. They must have been like, oh, my God, what are we going to do? And they were like, I'll just draw clothes on him. Who cares? This is the Silver Age. No one's going to notice. So that is one of the funniest parts in that entire episode. I keep saying episode because we're talking about the CW show a lot issue. Now, of course, the Flash returns and he uses um, Abracadabra's hypo ray against him, uh, hypno ray against him, and of course, Cadabra is sent to prison. Now, he shows up many more times in the Flash, each time being defeated by Flash, and even at one point, he was actually brought back to the 64th century by some, you know, future authorities, the future police, and they actually tried to cure him. They sort of gave him this sort of this gift. I I don't know how much of a gift it was for people around him, but when he would walk near people, anyone in his vicinity, anyone near him would applaud, which is such a weird thing to do the rest of the population. I'm walking downtown. I'm going to get some milk. This guy walks by and I just start clapping. I think that feels strange. But of course, Cadaver was having none of this. He still wanted to be performing for this applause. So he, of course, tried to escape and he brought the Flash in. He loses every single time like most, but it has this fun sort of time travel sort of um, edge to all his battles. Now, another fun moment in Abracadabra and the Flash's feud was when Cadabra turned Flash into a puppet just to get laughs. Like he was doing a puppet show and he was doing really well and he was actually using the Flash as his puppet like that he made. It was a puppet that he made and people were digging it. 
And Flash was actually getting a little weirded out, like, wow, people are going to not think I'm a great hero because this guy is using a puppet of me and I look stupid. So the Flash went out and solved a bunch of crimes and people then were like, oh, the Flash is awesome. And of course, that pissed off Abracadabra. So Abracadabra turned Barry and the Flash, the Flash, into a actual puppet and used him. Of course, he was beaten. And I mean, it's just... It is really one of the saddest, he's one of the saddest villains out there because he could have everything that he technically wants if he wasn't so needy and he wasn't so narcissistic and just had such low confidence and low self-esteem. It's really kind of sad. One of the interesting things about Kadabra is as he keeps returning to fight the Flash over and over again, he for the most part, does it alone. He never actually throws in with the rogues every once in a while, but usually not for good. Like he double crosses the rogues. We'll talk about that in a second. But, you know, he doesn't really team up with the rogues. And I can only imagine because it's, there is no way that an egomaniac like Cadabra would ever share the spotlight with anyone. He is not going to play second fiddle to anyone. So he doesn't do any team ups. Now, Cadabra's grudge with the Flash, goes from Barry to Wally and then to Bart. And Wally deals Kadabra a pretty substantial blow when during a battle, Kadabra's technology that's embedded in his body explodes and he's disfigured. And of course, then he vows to destroy Wally. Now, again, he's popping up here and there during the whole uh, Inferno series there where Neron was back and Neron was buying souls and selling souls. He, um, you'd think Kadabra would sell his own soul? No way. He's never going to sell his own soul. What he actually did was he tricked all the other rogues into thinking they were selling their souls. They all together were selling their souls, but really Kadabra didn't sell his own soul. He sold their souls to Neron to be an actual magician, to have actual magic. And he became one like a ruler of hell, and that was part of the deal. So here he had actual magic. Now all that's been taken away and taken out in the, uh, in the continuity, but at that time he did have that. Now another really horrible thing that Abracadabra did was to Wally. Of course, he's angry at Wally for maiming him. Now, he cures himself. He, he His face and everything gets cured again. But what he does with Wally is he decides he's going to hurt Wally by taking away his true love, Linda Park, who Wally is married to. So he rips her out of the timeline and it actually erases her from everyone's mind. So it was like the ultimate trick. He stole his true love, you know, erased her from everyone's minds, and course, everyone, no, no one knew about her. We thought she was dead, the reader, but she wasn't. She was actually just, you know, tucked away, hidden away in another dimension. And of course she's brought back that whole era. I'll be honest with you started to lose me with the flash. It got a little messy. Um, and then, you know, there was the whole thing with Wally being taken away to another dimension. Let's not get into it. Let's keep on track with Kadabra. Now Kadabra did in the end, get to hand a defeat over to a Flash. Now, it wasn't Barry, and it wasn't Wally, it was Bart. Uh, Kadabra actually helped the rogues kill Bart Allen when he took up the mantle of the Flash. And it was pretty sad. I remember reading these, and like I said, it was a kind of a mess back then in the whole Flash universe. And I don't think they really gave Bart a chance, and no one really wanted him as the Flash. They wanted Wally back, they wanted Barry back. So they, um, the rogues beat him, uh, beat him to death, uses their powers and just their fists and beat him to death. And again, I have pages from that issue over on the site, heroes, villains, and sidekicks.com. Now with the new 52, many heroes were wiped from existence. Wally being the one that I and many others missed the most, but he was brought back in the new DC, DC rebirth and in style. I mean, I got to tell you that issue with Wally and Barry back together again. I talk a lot about it in the the Wally West uh, episode I did. I can't remember what number it was, but you can look it up. It's right there on the homepage or over at iTunes. And it was amazing. So, But here's the bad thing. When Wally returned, so did Abracadabra. So guess what? Now he's back and he is after the Flash and the Titans. Now, I don't know if you've read Titans Rebirth. I've been really digging it. It's been fun to see Nightwing and all these characters back together again. I haven't gotten to those issues yet. I've got a stack 
that right behind me that I have not gotten to, and I'm really looking forward to reading those. One of the covers was interesting because it was a homage to the the puppet cover with um, the Flash as a puppet. So uh, again, I'm really looking forward to reading through those. And now we don't get to just read about Abracadabra like we talked about with the Music Meister. The Abracadabra is going to be on The Flash on the CW Network. And i got to say, he looks pretty cool. I haven't even let myself watch the trailer because I just want to see what happens. I want to be surprised. But I like the actor. Uh, he's being played by David... Oh, that's a hard last name. Da- oh, Des... Deshamelian? Deshamel? Oh my god, that's horrible. Um, <laughs> in, an, in that episode, he's going to be played by him. And... I like this actor because he just did a stint on Gotham as sort of a Joker fanatic, and I think he really did a great job. He's also had a small part in Ant-Man, and uh, he did a good job in that too. So I'm curious to see how the CW's Flash is going to change this character, how he's going to keep him the same, what's going to happen. So I know where I'm going to be Tuesday night. I'm going to be right in front of the TV. I'm going to be watching the Flash, and I'm going to see how they use Abracadabra. Well, I want to thank you for listening to this week's episode. Head over to the site, heroes, villains, and sidekicks.com. Go to the episodes page and look for the post on this podcast where you can then see all these pictures and videos that I've added. They're really fun. Silver Age stuff, animation. It's great. Now, there you can listen to the show, but better yet, head over to iTunes and subscribe. And even better yet, leave a review. I'd love to get some more, some more reviews out this year. So if you could take a few seconds, leave a review. It helps us sort of move up the rankings in iTunes and helps more people learn about the show. And remember, you can also head over to the site right on the homepage and you can leave me a voice message of who you'd like to hear on the show. And I'll actually play that during the episode. Now, I know I said I was going to be doing Wild Dog this episode because somebody used the voice message and sent me saying they wanted to hear about Wild Dog. But I thought since The Flash, these rogues, these villains were going to be on The Flash this next few weeks, I would squeeze this episode in before that. So next week will be The Wild Dogs episode. But if you'd like to hear about somebody, again, head over to heroesvillainsandsidekicks.com, click on the little green microphone at the top of the page, or there's a little menu bar, there's a little tab on the right side of the site, and leave me a quick message, who you'd like to hear and why. And if you leave a message, I'll be sure to play it on the show where we talk about that character. So I want to thank you for listening again. I really had a fun time doing this episode. We'll be back next week with more. Take care.